Let's uh, do rock, paper, scissors. One. <laughs> okay, let's go. One. <laughs> One, two, three. Ah, oh no! It's a tag. Rock, scissors. <laughs> okay. One more time. One. One, two, two, three. Okay, I will stop. <laughs> <laughs> This podcast is powered by iomops.io. Optimize your cloud infrastructure and CICD process with iomops.io dedicated DevOps team. Check out www.iomops.io and get a DevOps team now. Welcome to our series entitled The IM Podcast, a podcast about innovation, business, and most importantly, people. In this series, we'll be talking to founders, executives, and various experts about their vision, challenges, best practices, and lessons learned throughout their journey. Let's get started. Hello and what's up, everyone? Welcome to another episode of the I Am Podcast. I am Raya, your host. And today with me is not just one, but two amazing people on the show. Okay, let's welcome the first one, the VP product and co-founder at Aulir, Dimitri Solomon. Hello, Dimitri. Hey, how are you? I'm good. How about you? Great. I'm happy to be joined here with Victor and your amazing podcast, May. And great. Uh, thanks for having us. Amazing, amazing. And okay, let's call in the second one, the co-founder and CTO at Aulir, Victor Vasiliev. Hello, Victor. Thank you for having me here on this podcast. I- Yes, well, I actually connected with you and learned about Aulir. But before we go there, okay, I'm sure our listeners would love to know you more. So please tell us about your like career, your personal background first. So who would like to go first? Up to you. Let's uh, do rock, paper, scissors. One. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's go. One. <laughs> One, two, three. Ah. Oh, no. It's a tag. Oh, <laughs> okay. One more time. One, one, two, two, three. Okay, I will stop. <laughs> oh, you go. go. I go won. Uh, <laughs> ah. Okay. Uh, so uh, I started a makeup uh, tech career about uh, six years ago. Um, I started in startup. Uh, then it was a startup uh, which uh, called uh, Simplify. Uh, I was one of the first employees uh, uh, on Simplify. Uh, after uh, three years, uh, Simplify was uh, already had uh, like 100 people uh, around the globe, um, uh, and I felt that uh, like it's too big, and uh, I left uh, to be um, number two. Uh, in a young startup called uh, Coco App, then, um, and uh, I, I left eight months ago uh, when I was already a software architect uh, at Coco App to start uh, our journey with uh, Dimitri Nimrod and Ella, and Paul uh, Olir, um, and that's uh, basically. Yeah, it's been uh, roses and honey since we started. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you might okay. continue. Um, yeah, yeah. Uh, in difference to Victor, I'm uh, I'm from the construction world. I bring the basically the knowledge of the construction world and the and together with Victor we combined it to give a solution of uh, IT to the construction. World. Basically, I would like to think I started my career in the university. Back in uh, 2015, 2014, studied four years. I uh, worked many different jobs uh, during the time in uh, security, in uh, what did I do? Or I sold the uh, gas grills in Weber. It was really fun. <laughs> uh, I taught uh, second graders the uh, physics, like after school uh, curricular. And uh, around the third year of my uh, studying. Uh, I started to work in the construction world. I worked in a very small uh, family com- company. We designed the uh, plumbing for uh, private buildings. And uh, like a year and a half after, I uh, decided to need something bigger, a bigger challenge. And I started to work with New World. He's the co-founder. 
and we did the projects in construction and plumbing and fire safety engineering and uh, just recently in the first of April good day by the way we gave like the project uh, we finished the project from uh, the beginning to the end it was like uh, mine and what's plan we began and finished it together and the uh, around the 62 families we got uh, happy homes and, uh, <laughs> it was really challenging and fun and uh, like Victor mentioned eight months ago we teamed up Victor both is my childhood friend we know each other since the seventh grade um, so we started the startup around eight months ago and uh, it's been a uh, honey and roses since then <laughs> <laughs> Well, wow, that was what I am going to ask you like okay Dimitri is really from the construction world right like uh, managing their family business and Victor is started started in simplify so how do you guys work together like one couple and then one childhood friend who wants to answer yeah uh, I will answer. <laughs> actually okay. um... I, I won't say about uh, myself but uh, all of the founders are uh, great people uh, they don't have to uh, communicate uh, like uh, I think everybody at the team has uh, like uh, emotional uh, intelligence and when someone is down uh, another one can see that he's down and will support him and uh, um, like like we're a great team. And that, that is the feeling that uh, we will reach the uh, goal no matter what and we will support each other uh, no matter what and it uh, it doesn't matter like the background uh, we're here now together uh, and it's a great and empowering uh, feeling to uh, work with uh, such people and to have such people around like you answer. are going to conquer the world <laughs> yes okay, <laughs> okay. go and <laughs> go and conquer the world through this pitch okay so you are going to join the AWS startup loft accelerator program right <laughs> so it's it's really exciting we're gonna look forward to that if you can pitch a leer how are you going to do it yeah um, well basically I I'm not really familiar with the ABS program, it's like the IT world more of Victor, but if I would like to pitch the, our product, I would like to pitch it like uh, the world in a second. Um, okay. Basically, we, what we want to do is to give the, the project managers organizational and the managerial tools just to make their uh, day-to-day life easier. Save time, save money, and... Just give a simple solution that, uh, that our market, uh, the construction world really needs. Hmm. Okay. Speaking of, like, give them money back, give the time back, you know, in the planning and construction. So, could you talk to us first? How big is the problem? Why are you here? Why do you do what you do? So, who wants to speak about that? Yeah, let's speak about the construction world, I think, and Victor will add about the IT. Well, the construction world is Perfect. very conservative. It's, uh, it's very shy when it comes to innovations. They uh, don't respond to it very well. And uh, most of it is run by uh, the older generation, like the people who are 60 and above. So they're not very open to technologies and uh, everything, even though it's really changing right now with the beam and uh, all the new innovations. But uh, yeah, it's a, it's a hard crowd, but uh, we, we just want to make their day-to-day life uh, a little bit better by uh, switching from Excel to some other uh, innovative tools. Victor, yes, uh, Dimitri said it's a very conservative industry, right? But now it's getting or undergoing culture change since you are you guys are digitalizing it, so... Try. Yeah, how about you? Uh, basically, um, the, like, our day-to-day uh, pain points are uh, um, in uh, forming a great product uh, for those people that are uh, uh, seeking those uh, solutions. Um, at the, at maybe at the technical side, we, we do have some uh, 
challenges and some like day-to-day -day problems uh, like but we uh, solve them uh, like each day I can't say that we wake up because we won't sleep that's the point I think one of the major differences between the high-tech world and the construction was basically the like better conditions and the construction was basically pull, pull up your boots you wake up you drink your black coffee it's 6 a.m you had to go to the site Get to meet the, like. all the workers. Yeah, it's like it's like a different mentality. It's like you got to you got to go down to our level. Like it's it's maybe my opinion, but Victor likes it and he enjoys that, working with yes, us. Yes, <laughs> it's, it's, it's exotic. I, I would say that like it, it, it's uh, when I came first time and I saw uh, the black coffee and the boots. Uh, I thought to myself, it would be like, a great uh, experience. Like to um, get the, to the roots, like the, to the uh, conservative. <laughs> uh, but I, I yeah. got used to it really fast. Um, and I don't really like the old fancy stuff uh, on high tech. Um, like I like the practical people, the people that uh, love their job, uh, people uh, that they uh, like software. But uh, these days in the industry, we have a lot of people that. Uh, like the ice cream machines and uh, not the cold lines, you know? <laughs> and, uh, this is a huge problem. Yeah. <laughs> but now I like the black coffee and the boots. Okay. <laughs> yeah, we actually, just before our podcast, we did our first podcast together, Victor, and uh, Shimon was really amazing, really great guy. He's from the construction world. He's a project manager in a huge site in Israel which uh, does a project for Intel. And he just told us like his experience and his passion about the field. It's really fun to hear that he's so uh, passionate and happy about what he does. It's really amazing to hear that from here. Wow. And, uh, yeah, it's, it's really the, the, the cool thing about the construction world in the end is, is the final product, it's the build, it's the road. You can see the physical side of the thing. Maybe and, and we, difference like, between the uh, as as technical people, so I can take part um, in uh, like in this product, like give my uh, like something from me, and uh, and then I can see uh, those buildings or the, uh, those roads or uh, uh, Intel factory in Israel, which gives uh, uh, jobs to a lot of uh, people in Israel. Like, it's amazing. So I, I, I can take part in the construction world from my perspective as a technical guy. So you are giving back the time, right? And the money, because one of the pain points, I think, in the, in the industry is like human resources. Like, is that right? Skilled labor, you know, to meet project deadlines. Yeah. That's like uh, we talked to Shimon before. Yeah, deadlines and projects is all good, but uh, like what Shimon said it was really eye opening. The most important what? thing when you come to the to, to, to any place of work is the people around you. It's, uh, that's the most important thing for him. And I think it's the most important thing for us when we come to our jobs. Because at the end of the day, all the jobs are repetitive and. Uh, if you don't have the right group of people around, it's going to be hard to continue doing it. Okay, so talk to us about um, Aulier. I mean, how do you digitalize? How do you make them get back their time and money? Um, so, uh, like, let's get into the maybe the ROI, like the most important thing. Um, uh, the value that we give. Um, to uh, the construction vendors. Uh, we provide them uh, tools um, actually to, uh, to manage the project, but in a collaborative way. So um, uh, what it uh, what, what it gives, it eliminates uh, mistakes on the construction side, um, which can uh, cause a large uh, uh, loss of time and money at the end of the day. So the collaboration that we provide it will uh, uh, save them from making mistakes in the construction site. Yeah, I think like uh, I think the most important thing about the development of our project is uh, our approach. 
we have uh, around like uh, three or four to five already pilot uh, customers and we receive uh, feedback from them every day uh, not on a daily basis but on a weekly basis we receive feedback from their like Victor has a story in which he talked to one of the project managers and he gave him like uh, tools to read uh, like rejects and uh, points to improve and in two weeks and in two weeks we to finish to developing those rejects and the uh, We gave him what uh, basically he wanted. So basically, our approach is the most important thing because we always listen to what our uh, clients need and what they ask for. And we don't develop uh, things for the job. Like, uh, we don't yeah, always also, raise from the high tech world. Yeah, also, yes, Victor. Yeah. Uh, I, I can uh, deep dive into a, like, a specific, a specific uh, a use case or problem that uh, we solved to one of our customers. Uh, he told us that uh, one of his uh, employees, um, uh, an interior designer, uh, worked uh, two days uh, on an old version uh, of a drawing and uh, he asked us for a solution uh, so he can know uh, whenever the drawing is uh, old. So we added uh, a warning on the cursor, so each time he's looking uh, at an old version Uh, it uh, warns him uh, and uh, small uh, things uh, like those can uh, like save a lot of uh, labor time and uh, yeah I'll uh, extend for the for the construction perspective what it's important to us to know is that we're working on the current plan which is the most updated plan sometimes in different uh, in different uh, programs in the Uh, with management tools it's really hard to keep track on the on the plans if there uh, if there's like a new version which is an old version and if there's a new version we also need to think and uh, to say to ourselves like is it gonna cost us more money now the changes that the planners want or uh, not so it's really important for us to keep track of the versions of the plans of the designer it's uh, a must do so we won't do a takes the drawing out the, our, our system uh, starts to work on it and uh, another um, engineer also uh, takes the uh, drawing and do his things and they they can uh, merge it together so uh, everybody has to know uh, whenever uh, someone uh, took the drawing and started to work on giving uh, the solution um, for this problem and there is Uh, a lot more like we can talk uh, a lot of uh, hours about the solutions yeah, oh. yeah basically uh, like uh, it's we need to be project managers need to be keep track always of their projects uh, of the plans of the designs of the vendor rest of them and it's uh, and sometimes like on the most simple projects in Israel about uh, 30 30 meters high to the 10 meters uh, of height underground. It's like the most basic project in Israel. There's like uh, 30 designers, 30 engineers who work on it. And it's really how to keep tracks on their updates and uh, what, on what they're doing. So in, in Alir, in the development of Alir, we just want to give, not just, but we want to give the project managers better tools to keep track of all the information that, we, that all the designers create. That's what we basically that's the first thing that we identified uh, eight months ago right we wanted to concentrate all the data of the project in one place to give uh, the project managers access and insight on the on all the data not the data and plans flow the, so they can check the data real time and they get the real time notifications of somebody Also, uh, uh, the okay. product is available uh, ahead, on the platform, and um, uh, 
like in our uh, your plans want also to uh, develop an AI based uh, engine uh, that can give uh, uh, predictions and uh, like more detailed uh, insights about uh, about the uh, mistakes that uh, can happen on the construction site uh, according to the plans that the engineers upload like each day and then we want uh, to take them analyze them and give uh, predictions better insights or uh, um, like or deep dives and uh, sneak peeks uh, on the data uh, with the uh, project managers yeah uh, okay. but uh, yeah I think like our biggest uh, our biggest challenge is uh, not to overdo it's to keep it simple we need to always to remember that the uh, In contrast to the IT world, the construction world values more the experience. It uh, values it a lot, even there's a, a 60-70 year old uh, engineers who work on the site and they just want uh, like a calculator with big uh, buttons because they can't see like, the small buttons. So our biggest task is to keep it simple, keep it accessible to the old age groups so uh, people will want to use it. But if we overcomplicated it and uh, create like a, create like a job for a person to, to run a layer, it will be wrong of us. We need to keep it simple. That's uh, the biggest task, I think. That's, that's at least the feedback that I uh, feel that we receive from the construction itself. Not from mm. designers, but from the site. Okay. So, first, before we go to the feedback, I want to ask about... Um, because you guys you said you give real-time data that can help them identify the issue and you know make data-driven decisions like better decisions right okay give them time and money so could you give our listeners one like real world problem okay like they told you about and how you made an impact to that I don't think we have an example it's right Victor But I can uh, give an example that we plan uh, that we plan to avoid in the future I had in my personal project I was a climbing engineer in the project that we gave back in April and we had and we had like one major issue that almost uh, broke the whole project and okay. and we would we would love to make a lyric to avoid an issue like this um, okay so uh, basically we had like an element of the for rainwater and That the, the construction uh, team had to do before uh, before pouring the it was the two floors underground okay so the construction team had to do this element during the construction of the of the foundations and uh, they forgot they just forgot uh, to do it because it's like a poor coordination job uh, for everybody there but they We would like uh, our product earlier like to have an AI mechanism to to learn to learn like like this uh, this element is a uh, typical to all project it's typical it's not like it was unique to the project it's very typical so what we would like to do at the end is give a little Give machine learning tools to alert to learn the project and to alert in real time and man you're forgetting this element if you don't do it during this stage you're uh, basically you're gonna be in <laughs> trouble and we were in trouble we had to like uh, find a solution on the spot and it was uh, really hard and we almost messed the project up but in the end it turned out great and 62 happy families now live in the project and uh, But mm. basically we would like uh, to create a machine learning uh, device that gives real time uh, that gives the real time problems that may happen if, uh, by learning the typical uh, problems of different projects I hope I so much right yeah like you're gonna get into trouble if you forget something right yeah. and one of the things that you said uh, Dimitri is uh, people are kind of like you Did you say old? Did you say the word old? No, <laughs> uh, I'm sorry. I'm not an agent. <laughs> no, no, no. Oh, sorry, what did you use again? I forgot. I, I don't the think term... I said old, but they're... Uh... Is this it? 
<laughs> okay. Um. Uh. Not late. Okay. Like. And technology. Now they're going to this culture change, right? Like digitalizing. So, Victor, how do you deal with that challenge? How are you overcoming that? How are you educating them? Okay, we have to do this to digitalize so you can get back money and make better decisions. Uh, okay, so as Victor mentioned, um, the like the biggest challenge here is to uh, make the product interface uh, as simple and uh, as much as we can, um, and for uh, those purposes, uh, we have a great uh, designer um, and a, a very talented one, and. Uh, we sit with him and uh, with Dimitri, and Dimitri gives him the construction perspective, and uh, he uh, gives the UI UX perspective, and then uh, my responsibility is to bring it to life, uh, like uh, this combination. Um, so this is the, 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 the main challenge to keep it simple, um, and uh, the solution is. Uh, Great designer, great Dimitri. Uh, the <laughs> designer that keep the VP of that keep the VP of product happy. <laughs> <laughs> nice, nice. Where are you guys in your journey right now? This podcast is powered by iMobs.io. Optimize your cloud infrastructure and CICD process with iMobs.io dedicated DevOps team. Check out www.imops.io and get a DevOps team. Now.